The greatest challenges of our time are due to human impact on our world. When I was born, there were 3.45 billion people on the planet. By the time I was 45, that number had doubled, and now it's just about 8 billion. Happily, far fewer of us are living in poverty and poor health. We have made enormous progress in improving our per capita impact, but we are not moving nearly fast enough, especially in the global north. Our three greatest challenges as humans are interconnected and of our own making. Firstly, climate change, largely due to carbon emissions. Our impact on the natural ecosystems on which everything depends, through agriculture, urbanization, development, and climate change. And thirdly, the increasing realization that we cannot resolve our technical challenges without also addressing issues of social, racial, and intergenerational equity and diversity. It's overwhelming, right? If you're not hiding under a rock, then it is tempting to address these challenges one by one and head on. But to do so is to immediately confront their interconnectedness and to see that this is a messy, wicked problem for which there is no one right answer, just better and worse, and that better and worse depend on time and perspective. So how do we honor our humanity by working to keep our planet livable for everyone while keeping our societies intact and our mental health from fraying through grief and helplessness? How do we action our hope? In my world, the world of engineering and construction, we work on projects. Projects come about when a desire for action gives rise to a budget, a client, a time frame, and a project definition. Our projects are big pieces of infrastructure. They are expensive, long-lasting, carbon-intensive, impact natural systems, and form the backdrop to people's lives. As we work on them, we tend to focus more and more tightly on delivering them on time and on budget, rather than on delivering the best possible outcomes at the right price. The problem, and the opportunity, is that every decision we make impacts climate change, social justice, and biodiversity, even when that connection seems indirect. So how do we connect our existential challenges to our consequential projects? How do we keep the big issues in mind as we go through the work? In my experience, we can do this through design practice. Design practice has two essential components, a complete and clear understanding of the problem we're trying to solve, including all of its constraints, and an iterative process of creation and testing. Design practice allows us to center our existential challenges as constraints or success criteria as we cycle between creating solutions and testing them. This way of working, zooming in and out, challenges us deeply, but it allows us to look at old problems in new ways, to change our minds, to innovate and invent. It allows us to hold the space for the big issues as we go through the work, and it will allow us to meet our needs and maybe our wants within our global means. This is all a bit abstract, so let's look at some project examples. Hunters Point South was an abandoned industrial parcel on the shores of New York City's East River. The neighboring community was at risk from flooding due to extreme weather events and due to aging stormwater infrastructure. Resolving this issue was a key outcome for the project. We could have just built a big wall, but that's not what New York City chose to do. The new waterfront park pilots the use of blue-green infrastructure for stormwater management. It uses bioswales and rainwater gardens to create a landscape planted with native grasses, flowers, and trees. These have brought the return of native birds and fish and the park has reinvigorated the neighborhood by the addition of accessible outdoor space and an influx of visitors from further afield. The project has far better outcomes for nature, society, and climate, and it achieved this through a series of technical decisions that kept an eye on those bigger impacts. The building at 80 M Street Southeast was in need of repositioning to improve its value and its attractiveness. This could have been a conventional renovation or rebuild, but the design team advocated for the use of timber construction. 
The use of timber allowed for more, higher quality square footage to be added at far lower carbon cost than concrete or steel. The adoption of timber construction for tall buildings has been slow in the US, and this project shows that it can be done at high quality and while embracing safety concerns. It also showed the attention and determination needed to drive change in the construction industry. Switching scales, California High Speed Rail is an integral part of the state's climate and sustainability goals. When complete, it will allow travel from LA to San Francisco in a little less than three hours and at far lower carbon cost than flying. The project has put a sharp lens on carbon neutrality through the use of in-state tree planting to offset construction phase emissions by offsetting the land use footprint through the restoration of thousands of acres of natural habitat and by committing to 100% renewable energy use for operations. This project shows how keeping an eye on the biggest issues can lead to far better outcomes, and we expect that many more ideas will emerge over time, helping to sustain California's environment and people into the future. As the US highway infrastructure ages, we have the opportunity to rethink its impacts. For example, the I-5 in Portland notoriously bifurcates the Albina district, a historically black community. We worked with the local people to understand their needs and proposed a cover over a part of the highway. The cover creates new developable land and a walkable connection across the highway. This has helped support community health and cohesion while laying the groundwork for restorative justice and improving traffic flow and safety. This project shows how even a single design idea can have really broad consequences. Sometimes, understanding the broadest consequences of a single design discipline can take years. The nighttime lighting study drew on a decade of project experience and independent research to show just how lighting urban projects is about far more than providing light. Good lighting design can enhance biodiversity, reduce energy use, support public health and public safety, and enhance our connection, or at least help us keep it, to the natural world. When all of these perspectives are taken into account, it is easy to see how even a single design decision can have broad impacts, and keeping this in mind helps us to design responsibly. Holding the space for the big issues is not easy. There are time pressures, and some smart aleck will inevitably ask you to prove that doing the right thing doesn't cost more. It rarely does when all the impacts are taken into account. It takes pragmatism because there is no right answer to a wicked problem and personal resilience. There are three personal practices that I think will help. Firstly, we must be curious. If we are to change the world, we must be curious about the big picture, the broadest context, and how it's changing. We must also be curious at the level of practicality and detail, how things actually work, because this is where we will individually innovate and invent. Second, we must be generous. Every one of us is an expert at something. And we must share our knowledge, both in the hope that we will inspire others, and because for wicked problems, different perspectives matter. We must also be generous with time and credit, because we have to collaborate. None of us can solve these problems alone. And third, we must be brave. Convening diverse groups that actually solve problems is not easy. Leading from the front lays you open to criticism and disagreement, some of which will be intensely personal. But we must remember that the world is changed by those who dare to think differently, and it is well known that prophets always appear to be lunatics. Design practice is a powerful tool for addressing messy, wicked problems. It is not the easiest way to do things. It takes deep knowledge, inclusive teamwork, as well as creativity, generosity, and courage. But I believe that it is the best way for us to drive hope through our projects and to keep the planet livable for everyone. Thank you. <laughs>